Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Uh, I know it's been, what, two weeks since my last video on Spina Bifida Awareness Month. And I said I was going to do a weekly video. Whoops. Life got away with me. Um, have an update on the apartment. I'm supposed to move in next week, hopefully. Uh, according to what I found out yesterday, that it is still under construction, but... I'm told construction will wrap up next week. So be on the lookout for some moving vlogs in the very near future. I know I've been saying this for five months, but I think we're there now. Um, so, but today I am going to be continuing the Spina Bifida Awareness Month vlogs with a series of different facts and things of that sort. So the first thing is Spina Bifida occurs in the first 28 days of pregnancy, often, often before a woman knows she's pregnant. In most cases, spina bifida is diagnosed through an ultrasound between 15 to 20 weeks. Unfortunately, it's not uncommon for parents to hear a spina bifida for the very first time upon diagnosis. For many, it can be an uncertain and frightening time. My parents had just learned of spina bifida when they found out about me, so yes. That is very common. Although no one knows for sure what causes SB, experts think it is likely a complex interaction between both genetic and environmental factors. Sorry about the noise in the background. A neighbor just came by with blaring music. Uh... It is important to know that neural tube defects like spina bifida are not entirely understood. And it is not caused by parents' actions. It is recommended that individuals with spina bifida and couples who already have a child with spina bifida talk with their OB or genetic counselor about their risk factors. This year, there are hundreds of families who are navigating, learning about parenting and life, spina bifida for the first time. As a community, you give the best advice. And a lot of people don't know this, but our expenditures are seven times greater than the average individual. Our medical bills rack up very very quickly um a lot of us have multiple multiple surgeries in a lifetime in my 30 years i have been very fortunate to have only had about 10 surgeries but i know of others who have had anywhere between 60 to 80 surgeries in 30 years so it definitely varies from individual, but yeah, um, it does happen. Um, another issue that we run into a lot of the times is we cannot get complex rehab technology such as my wheelchair, for instance. I have struggled immensely to get appropriate parts for my wheelchairs. Um, that would benefit me. Um, and, you know, it, it's, it's sad. Um, and we also have uh, So, uh, 
Okay, so I'm, I'm looking to their Instagram page here, trying to get some things here. So it says, spina bifida is not just a pediatric condition. You cannot outgrow spina bifida, but you can grow old. There was a misconception many, many years ago that you could not grow old with spina bifida. Um, in fact, the Spina Bifida Association Facebook page, which I have linked in an another one of my videos I made, um, there is a gentleman who is 98 years old. 98, guys. And he has spina bifida. He went the first, I think he said, 15 years of his life with the hole in his spine. And he could not roll on his back. He was only able to be on his side for the first 15 years of his life. <clears throat> Spina bifida is off, often referred to as the snowflake condition. Just as no two snowflakes are alike, no two people with spina bifida are alike. So as I said, none of us are alike. We have many, many complex issues. Uh, that can come up, you know, and, and they vary from person to person. Um, and some are more severe than others, depending on your severity of the condition. And others are very mild um so up to 68 percent of children with spina bifida develop a latex allergy i mentioned this in a previous video of mine um i have always been on a latex precaution because of that little statistic. Sorry about that, guys. Dogs barking at the neighbors. Um, but yeah. Um, okay, as I was saying, uh, I have always been on a latex precaution because of that statistic, um, they just automatically said at birth, hey, spina bifida patients tend to develop a latex allergy, so do not use latex. Uh, let's see... And another thing, I was mentioning the complex rehab technology. We also have to use catheters a lot of the times. And those are very, very, very costly. Uh, they can be upwards of $1,000 a month. Or if not more. And a lot of times you have to fight insurance to get that paid something that we desperately need um and this next part i am going to dedicate to a special person who i met through the spina bifida uh, adults with spina bifida facebook page um did not get to know her very well but i met a young lady same age as me her name was Bailey Dunford. And sadly, she passed away on October 24th, I believe it was. 
Um, she had had issues calfing, and it, that was ignored by doctors. And her family, unfortunately, had also ignored the situation. Um, but she had cancer that went undiagnosed. In fact, they found it the day before she passed away. Um, and it's very sad that the doctors were ignoring her pain. She had been in pain for several months. And no one, you know, paid that any attention. So I think I'm going to go ahead and end the video here. I know this is kind of a short video, but uh, if you like the video, please give it a like. Comment some other video suggestions, and I will see you in the next one. Hopefully in my brand new apartment. So. Until then, comment some video suggestions, and if you are not, go ahead and subscribe. See you in the next one.